Hey, so for this week's vlog, um, I'm going to discuss different typography on different designs, and I'm going to follow along with the trend. I'm going to continue continue with the trend of just grabbing stuff that I, as a consumer, um, have purchased, and we'll kind of go through typography, which can be an interesting exercise. So. I'm very into baseball caps, so I have this one here, but because I think it was already touched upon, I'm going to go with my Winnipeg Jets hat. Uh, now, I'm not necessarily a huge Winnipeg Jets fan, but I do like to support all the Canadian teams out there. So, interesting typography on this. Um, it says Winnipeg Jets hockey, very clearly, um, and the font is a serif font. Now, there's an interesting uh, kerning in between the Jets uh, letters. Now, obviously, if the team's name was, let's say, the Canadien or any other team, it would be different. So I think that that's just kind of there to adapt to the uh, overall design to keep it, you know, big and clear. You know, they're not going to have it smaller than the Winnipeg going around and all that. So. I obviously I think that this is an effective way to market this particular uh, brand because it's very clear, it's big. You know what you're getting for you know what you're getting. Uh, it's a Winnipeg Jets hat, very simply. Uh, next here, I have uh, just a Budweiser bottle. I am not a fan of Budweiser particularly, but I do drink it after hockey because everything after hockey just kind of tastes like water, and it's the cheapest beer. But uh, even though it's the cheapest beer, you can see that the writing here, the, the logo itself, the Budweiser cursive, king of beers um, logo, I think they do want to make it a little more elegant because they do you know, proclaim themselves the king of beers and they want to make it look nice, even though it is a very, very, very established and recognizable brand. Um, now, one thing that I do find is very interesting in the alcohol industry in terms of the way that they design and market all their products is they kind of always make it make their brand seem very very fancy uh, oh import um, import from this country like here I have my third one is the uh, the Jameson right now Jameson isn't uh, an expensive whiskey in any sort but for some reason in the alcohol industry, they always kind of promote their products in terms of in being these historic kind of it's always been around Irish imported since ninth uh, since seventeen eighty um, and all that. So what I find interesting about this is boom, you got your name up there, the Jameson, very clear. And then all the little additives, triple distilled, triple distilled is in nice cursive. Wow, that's fancy. Isn't that great? So I'm, I'm coming up to this and I'm thinking, oh, I don't know too much about whiskeys, but this Jameson one, it looks like it's triple distilled, whatever that means. Uh, I like the taste and I like to mix this with uh, ginger ale. Um, so those are my, uh, my three typography, um, th uh, three typography design products. Now I can't, not really too good at identifying the fonts necessarily uh, i don't have one i mean i know i can recognize your Arial, your times new roman and you know your your basics but this has all kinds of different stuff on it um now i'm to discuss my relationship with typography and uh i like any like any other person i have uh adjusted perhaps a font to make a uh an essay look bigger, but I have an interesting story about font. It's not directly involved with letters or design. Uh, I've done music a lot of my life and um, I went to choir school. So we get a lot of papers with notes, uh, obviously sheet music. And it, as a kid, and you know, as a teenager, whenever growing up, we're receiving these, these um, documents Sometimes it's very, very, very old and it's been photocopied a bunch of times or it's just an old publication and the notes themselves sometimes are very, very hard to make out. They're either too small and 
Um, another thing is, depending on what language the piece is in, that can also affect how well you uh, read and see the music. For instance, uh, German tends to have very, very, very long words. And so fitting in the words underneath the um, notes isn't always an easy, well, isn't, it doesn't, it's not always effective because notes will be, have smaller kind of range and they'll be very, very small and concise. And then underneath it'll have these huge German words that kind of are very, very, very long and it's hard to keep up and stay straight. Uh, what we always was appreciated is when our director or our uh, headmaster would retype all these on, you know, a program on the computer to make all the music very, very clear and uh, very spaced and organized. And um, that that's the kind of thing that I have a close relationship with Fond. I think it's it's an interesting similarity between the two, the, the notes and, you know, the different letters or words and all that. So... Um, that's, uh, that's about it. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed.